Yeah, we, yeah, we can give the alligator a gun. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> How's that fair? And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news reviews, how to do some most importantly. Whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin Stone here in, in yes, I'm inside of you, LGC Actual. Flipping the bits, doing our nightmare fuel, all in our little Linux-powered super I'm about to serial conclude. studio. <laughs> and up there, the man with the base, one Jordan's fong. Uh, the rebel land. base. Yes, getting ready oh, to man. scoot. And not to be, well, no, Microsoft Love Linux. It's back, Pedro. Why did you do that? That's Pedro Mateus. And Britannia stayed up late past his bedtime <laughs> together with your shut realm dynamic, helping us form cocaine Voltron. Yeah, that's right. Um, you, you, you were, you were muttering show. about you were muttering about Microsoft. I was worried that like you spun up a VM in Azure and they got in touch with you. Dude, that was a thing, wasn't it? <laughs> they did that. <laughs> this this is like a legitimately happened. Just like a little sign jack real quick. Yeah, so yeah, dude, yeah. He, he like spun up uh, Ubuntu and because, you know, Azure is like, yo, here. It's option one. He's like, that works. That tracks. Then he gets and like that, a hit on his LinkedIn profile from a canonical yeah. employee. He's like, sup, stud? Yeah, <laughs> I hear you like spitting up Ubuntu VMs. Right? Can yeah, I offer I, you I, some of this? <laughs> like, no, no, don't. Who thought this was a good idea, canonical? Who? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh. So, a couple of things. Uh, shop. We have updated... Shotbot and well, actually, I I took Shotbot out, and I said, "Oh, a little blam!" All right, so yeah. and we've replaced it with another bot. So if you want to bang suggest show titles, you got to do bang s, just bang s, yes. then show titles. Bang yes, s. you can bang that ass. Vote dot <laughs> That's still gonna work. That's all fine. And uh, yeah, lads, I I'm I'm dreading things. I might get out of it, but I ordered the switch. So we're going to be playing, you know, Welcome to, to Vin's Fiber Emporium with transceivers, and we're going to be ripping out all the copper and the rack and doing all this stuff the adult way. But I thought I was going to have some time, man, because I ordered the thing like Thursday. I'm like, okay, I got like a week, whatever I got. Nah, Vin, no. <laughs> it's shipped. It's supposed to be here tomorrow. So uh, I'm probably detrimental to my health because there's no way I'm just going to be like, oh, I'm just going to put all this in the studio and leave it alone. Until like, Tuesday, no, I would be in there ripping that stuff out all Sunday night after the show. So if we don't have a show Wednesday, I've thoroughly cocked something up. So <laughs> no, I'll tell you exactly what I, I ripped it out, couldn't get it to work. I'm like, I don't feel like hooking all that back up again. <laughs> I, I I just like to imagine that like somehow you have been like crucified with like fiber and like the back of the studio, dude. <laughs> It's going to be an adventure. And, um, but one thing I will be able to do is the transceivers I got off eBay that were like super cheap, along with the uh, 10 keg uh, cards that were super cheap. They seem to work. So I'll be able to show everyone how to set up, you know, at least a one single 10 gig link between two PCs for under 30 bucks. That's there. We'll learn the thing. But what's new with you? Whoever. Me? I'll go next because sure. I'm 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 in the middle. I'm I'm the cream of this awful, awful Oreo. Yeah, I've, I've been, You're I've the been... delightful meat. I don't know, man. If I, 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 I walked I, I, up I on mean... like an Oreo that looked like us and like nah. L listen, don't judge straight Oreos. Dip, dip, They're dip doing it in their milk. best. And I'm like, no, but if you want to like dip in some fire, maybe. Um dip it in mayonnaise, man. Yeah, no, I've I've just, I've just been playing a lot of Metal Gear Solid. I've I've I, don't, I, I watched a playthrough of four and I'm like, man, I really need to like actually put in some effort in like playthrough five. So I started doing that. I streamed a little bit of it on Thursday. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be streaming any more of it. I'm just going to play it on my own because I cannot focus and try to entertain people at the same time. Uh, yeah, that's 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 it for me. Just counting down the weeks until I can move what into been my playing on Fridays, man. I didn't get it. Still, the Pokemon. Uh, it's still, still Pokemon. Uh, I lost I lost my starter. It died. I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm oh, better for it. What's new with you? Proper page? died? <laughs> Proper died. It's a Nuzlocke, okay. so. <laughs> yeah, no, over here, I've been putting the uh, pine sill to as much use as I can, and I ran out of uh, the DIY soldering kits again. The l l latest one was this one. You can see the amount of uh, solder points on that, oh, and no. uh, that USB port here 
those are some tidy ass pins. That mm-hmm. that that was. Uh, Have you learned to uh, flex <laughs> and drag? <laughs> no, no, he, he, not here, really. He, here's here's the it question. Just, did, you, did you did you solder in everything for USB three, or you just have like two pins for like USB? Yeah, it's a blue paint. He's no, got it's some USB paint. two. <laughs> it's just a, a so, so, uh, mini so, so paint a blue. Yeah, paint a blue. <laughs> oh no, yes. go back and paint over the blue ones. This is like black. Just, just, <laughs> <laughs> just fuck with people, right? Yeah. Like. But yeah, no, uh, as it turns out, DIY oscilloscope, it uh, it actually works. It needs, you know, nine volt batteries. If you were watching the uh, pre pre uh, super shows, it works. It boots. It does the reading with the little uh, alligator clips. It uh, yeah, surprisingly for something that cost me like five pounds off eBay. What does it do? It's an oscilloscope. It, no, really. It, uh, I, I'm curious yeah. if you know what the fuck an oscilloscope is. No, no. Does. <laughs> I, I know you use it to play Doom sometimes. Occasionally. <laughs> there is, according to uh, Frostclaw, a way to flash custom firmware on this thing, but you need to email some random person in China okay. to get the uh, key to do and, it. And it might be the wrong thing that bricks it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> also, he has. Yeah. Also, he asked for a lot of personal information, and you got to yeah. give it to him. <laughs> yes, social security number, credit card number, which is weird because I already paid for it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your, your mother's maiden name and her social insurance number. And... I, I wonder what would happen if we hooked the horse up to the scope. If we hooked the horse up to the scope, I think it would just transform into some awful Akira-esque nightmare. Because it's the Steam Linux Update Speaking of stuff out of the East, Steam China has launched. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, uh, Steam or Valve has uh, partnered up with Perfect Worlds uh, to launch the Steam client proper. We've talked about this a little bit. They've been putting forward the effort to get this actually up and running. It's now available. Uh, you can have a f- quote unquote full Steam client on there. Um, there's a limited number of games available right now. I think only 41 at launch. And unless you want to pay, play the guess the thumbnail or Google Translate <laughs> game, which these guys did, I didn't, I didn't bother. They'll talk about that more. Um, if you want to get your game on the list, it has to be approved by the Chinese government. Um, and one interesting thing, according to this, uh, this is from Steam Info. Apparently, the China numbers have always been factored into the Steam statistics, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a little skeptical on that claim, considering some of the spikes we see. Maybe, maybe it's still factored into the statistics but not the publicly released numbers i think that's kind mm. of yeah yeah so what the hell was... happened for linux to drop that much steam magic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude uh you, you don't know the valve because the valve has like their numbers that they know about and it's legit it's like the steam hardware survey you get that but that's valve can pinpoint that every single month if they wanted to they just choose not to I'm actually surprised to see RPG Maker and CSGO on that list. I'm like, RPG Maker, I'm kind of with you, Pedro. I'm like, yeah, all right, maybe. But maybe I'm like, oh, that'll let people get up to creativity. But CSGO? <laughs> hmm. CSGO yeah, seems- CSGO. And see, they uh, censored the crap out of PUBG. Uh, and that is mostly uh, the studio that makes PUBG is basically owned by Tencent. So, and they still, uh, the version of PUBG that you can play in China is still heavily censored unless you're using a VPN. Um, so, yeah, CSGO is a bit strange considering uh, how those so- types of games have been censored in the past. So- I, I guess. Competitive shooters, though, are a pretty common genre. And I think China wants. China wants some visibility there, at least on like an e- from an esports perspective. Also, like you can get around a lot. They can just change the name of things. Like you, d- you change like counterterrorism and terrorism to the People's P- Democratic Public Army, and you know people it's who want more, democracy. Uh, it's also to do with the realisticalness. That's a Hippie word. Blood. Shut up. <laughs> Real, re- yeah, realisticality. It- <laughs> it's the uh, depiction and how realistic that depiction is of uh, what's happening. Uh, games like Paladins or uh, Overwatch, those are very cartoony, so those tend to be okay. It's the sort of realistic looking ones like your CSGOs and your PUBGs and whatnot. That's where the issue is. And of course, RPG Maker, yeah, like Fred was saying, it's not inherently against the restrictions, it's just that some of the games we over here associate with the... um, 
rpg genre it's the um like the fantastical the uh the supernatural that kind of stuff that's still, still <laughs> that that but here's the thing though that rpg maker license is tied to whatever binaries those people reproduce or produce yep. so if they put something out that's a little subversive the chinese government knows exactly who did it so depending on how much yeah i don't know there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of like theory and questions we have but well, yeah interesting. Yeah, but I got a confession to make. Okay. I'm just trying That's to be I, I, I got <laughs> another confession go. to go. make. I got one. I'm a fool. <laughs> My job here is done. A. Um, yeah, that, that's what I needed stuck in people's heads. Uh, no, this is uh, from Tank Spot. Dude writes, um, Adrian, he's like, I got a confession to make. I've spent several hundred dollars on Steam controllers. F and what? Yeah, man, he kind of goes through. He's like, hey, this is a nice little love story to the Areola controller, man. Gaben's nipples themselves. And how much he loved it. And he really went off on like the gyroscope. He's like, this is the best feature in the world. And they didn't talk about it enough. And I can do this. Look, pew, pew. Ah, it's brilliant. And, you know, just like the teething issues. With, you know, it's been five years since it came out. And I was like, geez. Uh, yeah, basically a love story. And he talks about... How he is just straight up. He's like, I'm just buying a man now. I got backups to my backups to my backups. And then I got mine. And I got another one new in box sitting in another room because you know what? Oh, you. Ooh, ooh. I, I put a skin I, on get it. That yes. off. <laughs> I can't. I can't find mine because it's been sitting there collecting dust. Yeah. But I mean, like, I, I get it. For I mean, for all its faults, like they tried something radical and different and that deserves credit um in in a sea of identical looking controllers they tried to do something they tried to address a really a, a very real problem with the traditional controller scheme like how do you play first person games how do you play real time strategy games and yeah, like un under uh, we were. I was talking about this in the pre-pre super shows, and failure is important. Understanding why things fail is important for not repeating those failures. So, like, there, there, there's benefit to be had from the Steam controller's failure. And he's right. Gyro aiming is really nice. The switch implements it, and that's how you can play Doom and Breath of the hey, Wild man, and whatnot. The aerials yeah. live on. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. The knuckles that's and the original um, Vive controllers had them. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I think the uh, the index controller has them too. And one thing he does bring up is like, oh yeah, it, the Steam controller innovated the back pedals that they just lost a lawsuit for four million dollars oh, for. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like. Um, it, it really does feel like the Steam controller had a lot of features that were very underutilized, partially because they took a while to roll them out. Like the cording and stuff would have been super powerful mm -hmm. for a lot of games, but because that wasn't there, and because like. People lost interest before that functionality was exposed. Well, via he the does make a API. good point, just like straight up yeah. with like informing the consumers about the yeah. functionality inside the controller, especially with the gyroscopic stuff. I know you've mentioned it before. You're like, yeah, it's pretty good. And that's from like, wait, it has an internal gyro. Oh, okay. They didn't do a good. Okay. It's, it's they not enabled good... by default either. <laughs> yeah. They didn't have good messaging on that. And more importantly, for me personally, they never came out and like, hey, cut this on and you can do this cool stuff. They, they never really told me that. Now. It was an interesting device. We, we've got to be 100% about that. You know, it could have changed things up, but Valve can evolve. They're like, yeah, we're not interested in this anymore. New thing. And we all went. Yeah, that's, and that's the Valve. one big feature of these originally was that you could literally rebind everything. Mm -hmm. All the buttons, you can make them do whatever you wanted to. And then Valve and their decision, you know what? We're If we're trying to not be... Um, not uh, sort of promote the exclusivity of games and features, I suppose we should enable to this feature to other controllers. So then the one big advantage of the Steam controller was lost. I'm going to say at the end of the day, man, <laughs> here's how I feel about the Steamy controller. You know, it always was a better than average couch controller. If you're sitting back, you're like, hey, I got to get a mouse functionality. Hey, this is not bad. And it's always been like a so-so game controller. I'm going to say that I always enjoyed the ability to like play around like community voted profiles and button mapping. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. neat. Especially for games that had like less than intuitive control schemes. Right. We we're like, yes. oh yeah. So or or like this works fantastic. This would work way better on a controller, but I'm stuck with keyboard. Okay, well here's a controller layout that's like reasonably sane. And it, was it never was quite there because I I set up. <laughs> 
to the fact that I just set a challenge for myself to play through Bioshock 2 using the thing with the Steam controller. That was rough. I'm just going to say that. But (laughs) here's the thing. You got the gyroscope. He's heavy on that. The Xbox, new Xbox controllers, the PS5 controllers, they got the gyro. They can do the gyro dance nowadays. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I got one little bit of closing, though, because it's like, this guy said he spent hundreds of dollars on Steam. Now, we did learn the value of a Steam controller is up quite a bit because Pedro was like, oh, yeah. yeah, those things are pricey. <laughs> I uh, shortly, it was last year, shortly after Valve uh, canned the whole thing and they had their big $5 sale. I looked up a few on Amazon. It was like April, something like that. 60 pounds, 70 pounds. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> That's uh, so yeah, buying two of those will put you above the hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, easily. <laughs> okay, Jordan. Uh what do you think? Um they're going for right now. US team. Uh USA. Yeah. I can uh, hold okay, off. okay. You US is tricky because I'm I'm uh because I, I just think in Canadian dollars. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say 80 US. 80 US? No, are we talking? Does it have to be like collectible? New, new- New oh, in box. Oh, new in box. Ooh. New in box. <laughs> okay. New in box. We're looking at a hundred. <laughs> How about used in box? Would you settle for that? <laughs> I, I will. I will settle for used in box. All right. All right. Uh, survey says forty seven dollars. Okay. Still bidding. <laughs> Twenty hours left. Ch- take the completed ones. <laughs> new. Lincoln controller. Take the completed one. ones. Okay. Okay. All right. Where do I do that again, Pedro? Uh, it's at the bottom. Just uh, keep going. Price, uh, format uh, on letter. the left. No shit. Right Whoa. there. Completed Whoa. items. Sold items. Where? <laughs> on the left. There. Welcome back to how to use eBay cast. One hundred and ten. <laughs> that one didn't sell. The one at sixty. That's odd. Oh, that's a seventy four. Oh. <laughs> Forty bucks. Forty bucks. Forty is pretty Nine, good. Ninety nine hundred. <laughs> That's the carrying case, not the controller itself. Yeah, Eighty six. All, right, all right. All right. Okay. All right. I'm. 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 I'm in. I'm in the realm. I'm in the realm. Well, I'm still uh, going through this, man. Like, uh, it, it just didn't pass the smell test. This smells like somebody needed to write something, and this is what he came up with. Because if you're that hooked up on Steam controllers, you absolutely knew. Because we were, we had Steam controllers. We weren't paying that much attention to it, but we knew exactly when they went on fire sale. Even mm-hmm. I was like, F- I barely use this one sure i'll get another one this dude would have gotten all of them and more importantly if you have a collection of steam you would have put a picture of it oh yeah like like, at least the throne of like the boxes right like right i'm just saying (laughs) something doesn't smell quite right sounds like somebody just needed to write an article (laughs) probably (laughs) um we got some game Uh, updates though yeah, we, we got to go to Dude. space, uh, space station 14. It's the remake of space station 13. Surprise, surprise. They got a brand new update. Uh, and this comes with uh, a play test. Uh, so you can go and register on uh, on Steam. Uh, I did. It took him a couple days to get back to me. Um, yeah, so you- same here. That's not going to get as much attention as yeah. I thought it would. I guess Proteus kind of ruined me on that. It's like immediate. <laughs> yeah, so so you you may you may need to wait a couple of days if you want to test it out. I mean, it's a small enough game to download to. It's like 100 megs. Um, so yeah, uh, they added a Among Us mode uh, for people who want to still play some Among Us, and a handy dandy crematorium for body disposal, which mm. is nice. Yeah, uh, there's also a bunch of UI improvements. Um, they added some new objectives specifically for the uh, trader mode. And yeah, it's it's available for, available for playtest. They're soliciting feedback. You can request it on their Steam page. Link to all this is in the show notes. Now, I know yeah. when they threw it out initially, it was like three months ago, I just hit the button, was like, mm, receive email. So I guess they've dialed it back a little bit. It's something Probably. we were discussing in the pre-pre super shows, and I think uh, we'll definitely get some people together and like stream a game and play it. But mm. We need to understand what the hell's going on first so we can at least be able to scream at everyone else and say, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's no fun. Otherwise. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, 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 also, also, we, we, we need like maximum betrayal for when like it turns out one of us is the traitor. It's like, ah, we've that. been giving you bad inst- instructions the entire time. <laughs> we need, we need to be shifty. Not right. shifty. Shifty. I, 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 took on a, I took a shit on the floor, so I think I'm just shifty. Getting your uh, yeah, Did you take uh, off oh. your pants and your pennies? 
That might be my problem. Uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> o- o- Open TTD. Um, it is available on Steam. Um, Transport Tycoon is the game it's originally based off of. Uh, it's one of those engine re-implementations. Actually, I don't think it's an engine re-implementation. This is a standalone game. Um, and it's, yeah, you can, you could have downloaded it originally from Git. Now it's available on Steam. And this is good. I want, I've been saying this for years. I want to see more open source games on Steam because it allows you to co-locate mods with the workshop functionality. You can fund development. It's a great way because then you can be like, hey, we have a fire sale or whatever. We'll give you some bonus shit. Um, and also the, the community corralling is probably one of the best tools you can have. Like this open source games are a place where like early access, the early access philosophy really does apply super well because that way you can solicit feedback. You can have people submit bug requests. You have people trying various versions of the game, blah, blah, blah. But for now, uh, open TDD is on steam. It is free or not free. You can add it to your wish list because it's coming out on April 1st. You don't really need much. It's a lie. You, you need you according to its system requirements. You need a processor. That's it. Yeah, and uh, the this like the whole thing about uh, open source games coming to Steam reminded me. Where's Super Tux Cart? Because uh, hey, that hey, was approved hey, on hey, Greenlight. Hey, hey, hey. Calm, <laughs> you, you need to calm down. First, you're what's wrong with Linux gaming. Second, <laughs> it's only. It's only been four years since it was greenlit on Steam. So how dare? How yeah. dare? <laughs> and they did put out an update a while back to say that uh, it was due to licensing shenanigans, but they've been lagging a bit on that. Uh, the, the, there was a been. late. I couldn't confirm this because <laughs> I went down this rabbit hole when I saw Pedro post that. I'm like, how long has it been since uh, Super Tux Cart was greenlit? And I was like, four years. Then I'm in the forum threads on Reddit. And I'm like, oh, they said they wanted to completely rework the controller input before releasing on Steam. I'm like, oh, link to forum post. Oh, their forums are no longer in existence because it's ah. SQL data database error so i kind of tapped out at that point looking forward to it though <laughs> mm-hmm. eventually yes. one day <laughs> oh my god does, does, if god had a unit what would it look like uh, apparently like a, a lot of cubes and uh, something that's very clearly meant to be played in vr or at least that seems to be the general outlook <laughs> that they decided to create it Bonics? yes the go d unit uh, uh, they describe it as a first-person physics-based puzzle game, and God yeah, it Destiny is with a BFG. Go- oh, what? <laughs> it's the Nintendo Power Glove. Holy oh my God! It is. It is effectively a power glove. Okay, if that's it's, a Nintendo uh, Power Glove. It, it does two things: it can shoot cancer or bees. Cancer bees. Uh, I think ca- yeah, cancer bees is that's definitely the correct one. Right, greedy one. human being. <laughs> <laughs> it can but kill yeah. a yak from 20 yards away with <laughs> mind bullets it's currently available you can actually uh just buy it now it's seven pounds 19 so it should be like uh yep 10 bucks uh in the u.s evil when it does uh, sense. yep and it is um it, it's a first to person man. puzzle game it's not you know portal level but um they, they the, the inspiration is clearly there is, is it at least talus <laughs> principle level possibly just because i got very no, tired no. of the telos puzzles I, I i guess that depends if it has a benchmark or not <laughs> this is, this yes. is exactly where i was going with it i probably have 70 hours in telos i've probably played the game for like 90 minutes you you know all the puzzles though because you sat through that infinite freaking benchmark as oh they, yeah could, and, and uh, oh yeah i was like terrib- the tutorial area puzzles i know them all by heart <laughs> also a bit cross when they changed the benchmark I'm like what that's different um, <laughs> <laughs> yes Wait, this is a new thing. I don't like change. It's my it's like you're putting that in a different position or you're taking a different route. What are you doing? I was, I happened to run it and I was like, what? That wiggle wasn't there. Like, You've seen those too many times, old man. I'm like, correct. Right. Fair enough. So let's get m- medievalian on somebody. Medievalian. Medievalian. Yeah. Medievalian. Medievalian. <laughs> medievalian. I, I, I uh, need a hat for that. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it is. Is, uh, as they describe it, which is uh, interesting, a story rich action roguelike where, you know, fantasy medieval type of uh, setting gets invaded by aliens and, you, well, you basically have to uh, get rid of them. The Looking at the um, screenshots and the trailers itself is like, oh, it's got a Diablo style combat in 3D, like a sort of isometric camera uh, all the same, but it is full 3d hey they're and using the whole DaVinci Resolve thing. for their video i know oh, i know yeah. that's over there <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh 
and uh, yeah, it is uh, it is currently available. It is an early access, so uh, do keep that in mind. I I'm gonna wait, but uh, bitch, sign me up because uh, that whole roguelike with Diablo influences. Yeah, give me. I- I mean, Diablo roguelike is a bit of an oxymoron. Diablo is a roguelike, but I'm also I'm I'm also super into this. The I'm the you mean, it. but yes, <laughs> whatever. Um, oh, I, I, oh, oh, oh! I, I love that. I love that. I love that. You got well actually back. You're like doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't fucking care. What I what I care about is the art style of this game. I think it's really cool, and I'm also into magic versus technology. And when they combine to make magic technology. That's my favorite. I I love that shit. If that happens in the game, sign me up. And finally, before we get out of here, uh, one last new hotness for you. And it, oh, it's everybody's favorite. Which can, is yeah. Can, no, can we call it a that, genre? <laughs> yes, we might as well. It's a uh, top-down a camera zombie twin what? stick shooter what? shmup, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's called Enemy Remains, uh, because that is a genre in and of itself that we have plenty of as far as Linux is concerned. The only thing uh, I can think, Pedro Mateus, is this is going to be like the easiest setup to do out of the box on Unity. There's probably a pre-baked, uh, like pre-baked mechanics and literally everything else that all you have to do is throw some other visual assets at it and there you go because we have seen a lot of those uh, people complain Hover that chair. Linux doesn't get a lot of games but uh, we have plenty of this kind of game also quick licks so many quick licks I you said well quick yeah <laughs> quake engine was open source a long time yeah. ago so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah the, it, it's it's either it's either top down shooters or quick clones That's well, all i'm got. i'm looking we're looking at the trailer i'll, I'll have my two comments one Not gordon freeman <laughs> one it, anorexic gordon freeman it's a little Jeez. bit choppy in the trailer too and there seems to be some v-sync issues with a caption uh currently 8.99 40 percent off regularly 14.99 what does it what the hell's that it looks like a it's a pupper. Okay. It's adorable. Uh, I don't, man. Okay, let's see what these system requirements are going to be. Is it going to be saying, all right, those are saying we don't get to give any stack yeah. for that? No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Preferably that NVIDIA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, there you go. Coming up next, Google's going to ban all of our accounts, no. but we're still going to be able to play Stadia. Thank God. God damn it. And um, chances are you've had plenty of steam to keep you fueled through that particular segment. So now we're going to get... Interior cognac alligator. It's drunk. Okay. It's it's, I... it's very drunk. <laughs> Is it as drunk as Pedro? I don't know. Uh, I just, I just in my brain was enough. like... <laughs> all the evolution is like do not tango with a drunk alligator it's like agreed i mean that's, that's a valid point right but you can you know, remove the, the drug but yeah no 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 because you see now now we have our latest patreon goal if you head on over to patreon.com slash linux gamecast if we get if we get to the 500 dollar a week level pedro will have to fight an alligator and both of them will be drunk oh no <laughs> oh yes oh yes this is happening baby patreon com slash Linux Gamecast. Can, can uh, we at least make it a fair fight? We can like, yeah, we, yeah, we can give the alligator a gun. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> How's that fair? <laughs> Hush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, this, like, this like, doesn't uh, involve you. Yeah, <laughs> it clearly Shut, does. Hush, adults are talking, Pedro. <laughs> oh man, uh, we got some people to think. Uh, if you uh, pick anything up. We all have like little wish lists. I got one for the studio as well. And um, if you get anything, you end up on this wall. But this suave motherfucker is already on the wall. It's our theory. If you wait, you can see it. Yeah. Like, uh, there it goes. A, a, a little bit right under bass. Yeah. Blur. And <laughs> what can only be described as breakneck pace for me saying, okay, this is something that needs to get done and it actually getting done because I love spending money. Um, our theory uh, picked up. Are these the good ones? No, these are the, uh, wait, yeah, these are, because I got these other ones I got on eBay. Uh, I don't like, know, what do they taste like? They're delicious, man, don't tell anyone. Uh, a pair of fiber laser noodle transmitters. These are uh, SFP Plus, iPolex. They do work with uh, everything I've plugged them into so far. I'll be testing them out later this week. Thank you, Arthur. And for that, uh, that just, that's awesome. Yep. 
Yeah, uh, Artharon also got me a game. He bought me uh, Celesta Crown of the Magister, uh, which is that a sounds tact- dirty, doesn't it? It's a, it's it's a, it's another tactical <laughs> RPG. I I might play it a little bit after on Thursdays after we're done with Disco. But you know, okay, we'll yeah, he also bought me uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, uh, that, aka Star that, Wars Souls. <laughs> I I, I want to see you stream that. I I, I will actually tune in. If that you stream will be that. next week's stream. Yeah. <laughs> It's better than down in a hole, man, which is, yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> we, we, we got a store, though. We store got game. Yeah, we, we got new merch. We do. Technically, we do. Uh, we got T-shirts. We got their Hell Alex. We got the LWDW show we do Wednesday. Go check that out. Of course, Frank, Frankophile. And uh, we got the Hell Alex mask, if that's your Mayo, thing, Mayo mask. But more importantly, way down here at the bottom, if it loads. Watch it not load. Hey, we got the Frank mask. Uh. So... But more, even more, more, more importantly, we got the Frank tote bag. See, the spring Frank. Nice. Oh. It, it's not a fanny pack, but okay. <laughs> We're not doing fanny packs. Will you shut up about that? <laughs> Never. I will not. Sh- Once you start making fanny packs, I will shut up about the fanny packs. You know what? I, I might just do a one-off print and wear it and be like, where's she got now? In the wear fanny it on your pack. Forehead. Wait, on. <laughs> Obviously, it's in the fanny pack. <laughs> Where like um yeah I just get a bunch of <laughs> yeah just like the, like the, no you gotta have like yep. the fanny pack the bandolier, bandolier. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and then just like throughout the show just start producing random items from it just like props. <laughs> this joke cost me three hundred dollars. Fuck off. And it was worth every, <laughs> every cent, penny, man. Every red cent. We oh, do want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, be a patron. That's how we finance all of this nonsense. Because let's face it, man, advertisers don't want to touch this. Um. <laughs> But what? Do, what? No, no. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. We we try to sweeten the deal because hey, man, times are not like turbo great. But if you got you know four quarters, sixteen a month, sixteen whole quarters, you can drop out. We're gonna give you access to our Discord. We're gonna give you a special show each and every week. There is hundreds of hours of semi released content. Our pre pre super shows, and that's all the stuff that we plan. Usually like reviews and stuff like that. Whatever we're thinking about, do it in the studio. Usually a TV show makes it in there. Um, most importantly, Discord. We're hanging out in there. If you are a Twitch sub, if you do the thing on Twitch where it says sub, you can link that and also hop in our Discord as well. Didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Huh? And we know it works because ah. we've we did this thing, Pedro. I've yeah. said it and I mentioned <laughs> it, and people were like, "Hey." Now that you've mentioned it, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Now, now and we've get established in. that it works. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> also, yes. Indeed. All right. That's brilliant. Bye, bye, money penguin. Bye. Well, I mean, the Google saying that too to Terraria sales. Oh, am I right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the developer for Terraria had their um, Google account banned, and once you lose your Google account, you lose access to everything that's tied to it. So and everything. Um, this is an oopsie doodle of epic proportion. Yes, it is. And yeah, basically, they were working on the uh, Stadia version of Terraria, and chances are you probably know about Terraria. It's not exactly a small indie game mm. by any means or measure it, it uh, was very one very well known yeah at one point yeah, like, like you know, years six ago. years ago yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah no right now and everyone that is familiar with that kind of genre the minecraft style genre they've at least heard of like no oh, it's 2d minecraft but yeah, Google, after a YouTube terms of service violation that they tried to contest, but they couldn't because the email address was tied to that same account and the account had been banned, they that, uh, were basically that, that's locked not a out of everything. Solution. Yeah. That's, and that's a solution. It's wait, wait. yeah, they tried to get in touch with uh YouTube uh and Google on Twitter because that was the only way that they had, and all they got were bot replies like, Have you tried hitting the forgot my password link? Have you tried doing this? Have you tried doing that? It's like, no, if you're if this is how you're going to treat me as your business partner, it's over. No stadia version of Terraria, we're out. And First off, man, scorched earth policy. Huge fan of that. I can respect yeah. this. Now, <laughs> I want you to think about this because, you know, this comes shortly, like last week, week before, um, mm-hmm. the Stadia team went, hey, we're letting go of our in-house development teams, all three, to which the everyone went, you had in-house development? What? Uh, okay. You do that. And at the end of that announcement, you're like, we're going to make it 
really big focus for our third-party developers. We're going to give them the love and care to help make Stadia great. Then they go and fuck off and do something like this, man. Uh, what? Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is how you kill development on your platform. Here's something I want to ask you, Jordan. Uh, Whoa. And also you, Pedro. It's so horrifying, though. When you think about it, it's like if your primary Google account gets new, yeah. that that's going to throw a f- bad thing that, into that. You. It, uh, literally yeah. everything that you have tied to that, you're locked it, out it, of it. It, it is. A, it's a circular <laughs> dependency. Yeah, this guy tried to contest this this takedown, but he can't get to his email account because it's Gmail. I mean, that that's that, right? Like, and I don't think this is Google actively being malicious. I think this is an organization of this size that is automated so much of their workflow, not being able to like see when someone is having an actual problem. And that's Dude. kind of that's the issue with these automated like bot workflows mm-hmm. is things Sometimes, get lost in the shuffle. Right. You get to think about like, of course, nobody can come out and be like, hey, we can help you with that. Because that's going to open the floodgate up. Like, oh, you get special yeah. treatment? Oh, as opposed <laughs> to, you got to think, this at what scale this happens every single day. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, from when this article was posted on ours on the 8th of February, Google still has not replied. They have yeah. been completely radio silent on the whole thing, which, again, does not look good. So, Hang on, let, this let is me, a shit show. Let, let me help you out. Um, <laughs> do a role play, Jordan. <laughs> Yes. Um, I, I want you to be um, my, my co-developer in charge of Stadia. Okay. Inform me that uh, what just happened. Uh, then your account has been locked out. You can't access no, no, your no, email. No, 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 no. We're both Stadia, buddy. We're both Stadia. Yeah, you got to oh. break this news to me. Man. Like, I, didn't hey, get but- I didn't get any news. The, the automated system didn't send me an email. I mean, if you want to play along or not, I I, I am. I'm playing. I'm playing along. I never got. I never got the news. The uh, the automated bot that's supposed to send me the email never got. Never sent me the email. So the joke was going to be, ladies and gentlemen, and before Jordan's like, "Oh, I'm going to walk over this. See, it's my thing." Um, <laughs> I was like, "Hey, man, this guy canceled his fucking game. It's going to be a big game. We really needed it for Stadia." To which Stadia's like, "Well, Google's like, hey, well, we're going to cancel Stadia in a few months anyway. It's not that big a loss." <laughs> yeah, everyone already knows that's coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, people knew it was coming before Stadia got launched. I've been, I've been yeah. doing my best to play devil's advocate, but when they're trying to, when they're do shit like this, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, when they're it's being hard. this blatant about it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to sympathize. <laughs> Uh, but Google's at the very least, gone to Google. one of the biggest issues that um, the world has been facing keeping small children up at night is the lack of Wayland support and OBS open broadcast. Uh, <laughs> that's what we use to bring you the show each and every week. And what you might be saying, well, what the hell's Wayland? It's the, it's just 10 years away. Uh, it's the next, it's the improvement to X. It's the stuff that's going to make Linux do all the things. But up until recently, I know we've talked about it on the Wednesday show that the next version, this upcoming version of the Ubuntu is going to be shipping Wayland by default. If you have a AMD, almost at ATI, get off my lawn, built it. And we're going to see Fedora. How's Fedora doing with the Wayland these days? It's, it's been doing, it's been doing pretty good. Um, the, uh, what, what do you call it? The, when, when you did the PPA for the, uh, for the NVIDIA or not the PPA, the copper for the NVIDIA drivers, uh, it disables the, um, or no, no, because no, no works with uh, no works with Wayland and yes. Nvidia. So yeah, um, and Fedora has been pushing GNOME. So that stuff's been pretty painless. It's just like when you try to play a game via X Wayland, the performance is not there. Well, due to the nature of the beast being Wayland, now uh, the way you have to capture audio and video, it's a completely different system, and um, you wouldn't you just couldn't do anything with it on OBS up until now because this has been merged, man. Uh, the EGL Wayland. I think this is part three. This is I, I just saw. a bunch bunch of this nonsense flow through on their discord uh build bot like, hey this is gonna be a thing they they got they got the scaffolding in there i don't i don't want you to get your hopes up too much <laughs> but um if you got nvidia currently right now until nvidia updates those drivers with a patch the thing that does the stuff don't get excited but if you've got ati and you don't feel like well if you do feel like building obs it's easy to build build instructions on their web zone it's been updated and go play with it because mm-hmm. they need testers, but it's there, baby. It is yeah. there. Indeed. Yeah, I, I, it should also work with uh, Intel too, right? Because that's, that's also still using Mesa, so. Yes. 
The reason that's I technically didn't... a different driver is i nine six five versus Gallium, but no, yeah. I, you see, I, I have the new XC video card. I got it from my dad, who works at Nintendo, and and, and I'm 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 doing some broadcasting. The reason like, I didn't uh, bring up Intel is because I don't want people to think they can stream on their fucking Intel cards. Shh, you 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 can do it. OBS it's not not it's well. Stupid. It doesn't I, run great on Linux. XC doesn't it. do it too my, well. My yep. 1440 mm. at 200. And gra- oh, could you submit your log real quick? Yeah, get fucked. <laughs> well, will, will it run on my M1? Running Asahi Linux. I don't know, man, but I do hear Mo cards equals Mo problems. Yeah, so this is from uh, this is from Mike Blumenkrantz, supergoodcode.com. We've talked about him. He's a graphics developer who's been hired by Valve to work on uh, drivers. And um, apparently he has gotten Zinc and NVIDIA working. The fir- this is in two blog posts. The first one, he shows a screenshot with GLX gears. It's like, okay, yeah, anyway, I, I got it working. And number two, the blog post is sort of how he um, how he managed to actually uh, do this. Uh, and he t- talks a, bit, a little bit about the image creation, memory allocation. I don't know, man. I got, I, I got to recover because I went to his main blog play page and that's like, ah. Uh-huh. No, yeah. <laughs> um, for, for, so for those of you who don't know what Zinc is, Zinc is essentially OpenGL implemented via Vulkan. So uh, if you have... A say, say you're on a platform that doesn't really have a lot of good OpenGL support, but it does support Vulkan. This is a way to get your application working. Um, Mike does say this is there, there's a lot of there's a lot of arbitrary memory copy that's required for this to work on NVIDIA. So it's not super performant, but this is the initial step to getting this actually working. So, oh, you engine, remember when you were going to have a Vulkan render? Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. said, oh, superposition will totally have a Vulcan render. Uh-huh. Now it does. <laughs> well, yeah, it does via OpenGL running on Vulcan. But yeah, no, this needs to work DXVK style uh, for all of those older, like, single, massively single-threaded OpenGL titles that we've had for years. I-, I want to see the performance bump on those. Probably not going to be great, but I want to see it. I, I want to see some of those games that were really terrible back then. Just actually, oh, look at that! What this is going to be a thing. What, the more this is get, to, the more this is developed. Um, it's just going to hold true. I mean, Linux is going to become the place for your current games are going to start. To, you know, right now we we sell stuff as much as it ran anywhere. Cyberpunk day one release really working with Proton, but especially your older titles. It's going to be the Swiss Army it's just chainsaw the of stuff. Gaming. One one thing I'm one that thing I'm kind of interested. <laughs> one thing I'm interested to see though is once like Zinc gets to a point where it's actually performing on par with native uh, OpenGL or better, mm-hmm. I want to see what actually performs better is uh, DirectX through Vulkan or OpenGL through Vulkan. That would be the yeah. Uh, that would be that would be the that would be an interesting <laughs> race. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah. Kirk versus Gorn. Yeah. yeah Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> uh, fun times ahead, but we're going to talk about Vulkan. We need to talk about ray tracing because up until recently. Yeah. Um, there wasn't really a good way to benchmark any of this, but GP Snoopy dropped in. He's like, hey, man, check this out. Ray tracing Vulcan. It's implemented on Peter Shirley's Tracing One Weekend book using Vulcan and NVIDIA's RTX is on Sun extension. I tried it. I built it. And it did the thing, man. I was quite happy with it. 100% it compiles and it, in fact, benches the race. I was able to get... On my 2060, no cape edition, non-super, uh, 29... Point six firms <laughs> at 1080. So get wrecked, you fucking scrubs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wait, hang on, hang on. 1080. We're, we're about to get the uh, <laughs> we're about to get the benchmark digits from at least the 1080, maybe not the 1080 mm-hmm. Ti. And well, yeah, I, I I didn't I didn't get a chance to run this on the AMD card as well because you because this recently got ported to the Chronos extension as well. It's no longer dependent on the NVIDIA ray tracing, mm-hmm. and it's you got some interesting conclusions because apparently the the cores on uh, the the Navi stuff uh, is actually capable of doing better software ray tracing than NVIDIA. It doesn't rely on um, doesn't rely on uh, tensor cores, and it's capable of doing a, a lot of those maths in clusters. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. That was kind of the whole thing with the AMD implementation of ray tracing is that most of that is software based, which was kind of a problem because they implemented DXR, not Vulkan based ray tracing. But yeah, uh, uh, over here, I did run the uh, the benchmark on the GTX 1080. Magnificent, magnificent <laughs> 11 point something uh, FERPS. 11 
<laughs> hey man, don't, don't don't feel bad, scrub. <laughs> I, I I I look forward to like the arms race when you two are both looking for new video cards. I've already called dibs on the thirty sixty page. It's like I want the thirty sixty Ti, and I'm like I don't need that. I need the twelve gigs of memory RAM. Yeah, no, I just want better gaming performance than this 1080 can give me. That's it. I'm a and simple person. Let, let's face it. Let's face it. Those cards don't exist. I mean, none of the 30 they series don't. exist. No. No. Effectively, but, yeah. Drogger OS, it still exists. It still exists. And uh, they are too, they too are planning some new hardware, which may or may not exist. It doesn't. But uh, yeah, they have a new uh, blog uh, post out. Uh, they put it out on February 7th. And uh, yeah, they put out an announcement to say it's still ongoing. We're st- we still have stuff and we have some stuff to uh, show for it. And uh, well, they reworked the system installer to handle uh, partitions better. And if you already have a predefined and home uh, partition, it will respect it. Uh, it will also handle um, the, in the future. It, right now, it still doesn't, but in the future, it will handle RAID. So, if you want to get your YOLO RAID for your gaming uh, Draugr box, you can so, have that. Finally, I can put it, these uh, PCI by four NVMEs in YOLO RAID it, and actually get some performance. Is this <laughs> so? What 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 is this? Is this Gamerus? Is this Gamer OS or? Um, no, this is, different, is different one? not Gamerus. This is another uh, Linux, uh, Linux gaming focused distro, but not Gamerus. Gamerus is the Arch, not Arch SteamOS version. This is the but Arch this one Nemesis. Is, this is the one attempting to be like the in betweeny one that does desktop stuff as well, but will uh, focus on well, let's the talk gaming about it for side. A minute. I mean, basically, this <laughs> is. We'll get to the console. Uh, with this update, you know, some work's being done with the system installer to kind of make it, you know, work. And um, mm-hmm. the big announcement is Velveeta. So that is <laughs> going to be the gaming console. I'm sorry. I'm calling it Velveeta from now on. I don't care what you've typed. Vitala, but okay. <laughs> Velveeta. I like it. It makes more it's, sense. It's very cheesy. So we're kind of looking at this, man. And, you know, it's the best of times, worst of times to... Um, Think about releasing a gaming console. I'm going to say, man, Mm -hmm. um, this just kind of reads out. And I I say this with love, no judgment, kind of like a little pipe dream because I've been here. I've been to these places. I'm like, yeah, all right, spitballing. Like, we could do this. We could do this. Certainly like lower end hardware that's like 600 bucks, mid range, 800 and a thousand dollars for the Velveeta X. Uh, You know, just going through possibilities and stuff like that. By the way, Drugger OS and ARM did. I'm going to say this, though. Here's the problem. The low-tier hardware, I mean, how many companies have tried and failed, including Valve, to make the PC in the living room happen? It's, I, mean, I, I think Dell really came the closest with that, like, Alienware thing. Possibly. Yeah. But and well, you're looking at the price because now, yeah. for 600 bucks, you can get, well, eventually when well, it, it's, it's like the it's like the 3000 series ps5 right now, you can't get anything exactly but 600 dollars <laughs> the low end gets you into the xbox series x territory mm-hmm. where you, you can't compete against these companies that are selling hardware at a loss mm-hmm. right yeah <laughs> it's all, very all, hard to <laughs> compete with also, that. <laughs> also again like there is there is dedicated infrastructure and a game development pipeline for the xbox not really so much with linux and especially when you're doing like custom builds like this it's going to be kind of finicky mm. for sure so the, 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 the that's, one that's, thing that's why, that's why that's why gamer os has a certified list so that they can get on top of yes. that they're going to be like oh no don't don't even bother trying to play these other games we're not even going to support you these are the ones you can play on our system yep yeah and they are Gamerus is very much trying to introduce other stuff like compatibility with emulators so you can launch those directly from Steam Big Picture. That is amazing. They absolutely should keep doing that. Out of Draugr, though, uh, the one thing out of this article that I really want to get my mitts on is GCDE. It is the game console desktop environment. It's basically GNOME, but you use it with a controller. Not necessarily a Steam controller, but the controller in general. Um, I, I want to try that. 
uh, out of morbid curiosity, but I want to try that. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's it's kind of like I'm 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 interested about something like this too. Like people playing around with sort of the desktop environment, and what they can do about it. Nova in chat realm was working on a uh, like a XR desktop, which I thought was yep. like a really interesting project. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's it's cool to see people try to like tackle these problems. And that's the nice thing about Linux is that because you can swap out the components you don't need for more specialized components that are useful for you, you can build these sorts of appliances, which yeah. is pretty cool. Just not a moilet. So not not. <laughs> Not correct. <laughs> yes, Yuzu. Uh, you might want to Yuzu this to play some Nintendo Switch games. I love the little Nintendo character with whiskey. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> that, that, that's that's Isabel, and she's a mean drunk. Um, so they they got a they got a progress report for January 2021. It's February now. We should uh, tell people but, what Yuzu is. Yes, it is a Nintendo Switch emulator. I said that. Um, I wasn't paying but, uh, attention. <laughs> well, I mean that can't be helped. Uh, but they they have a they have a progress update, much like uh, our PCS three. They're telling us what's going on, how they're solving problems, which is really cool because it's fun to see how people reverse engineer hardware and software. Uh, so they've put a lot of work into their Vulkan implementation. They've done a complete buffer cache rewrite, which will help make your games a little less seizure tastic, um, <laughs> especially especially stuff like uh, Xenobank Blade Chronicles. Uh, you are going to need the latest and greatest Vulkan drivers if you're going to want to try any of this, though. Uh, but it's good they have some improvements uh cinematics are working if you're playing pokemon you can actually fight leon and his charizard did you hear he had his charizard it's the greatest charizard ever my god i want to suck that charizard's dick um but yeah um it won't uh but you can actually fight Why would the you challenge take a, when you got a perfectly good dante <laughs> yes that's yeah, Double Bay Cry. That was 50 50, <laughs> man. I didn't, I don't remember who was who. Yeah. Double Bay Cry uh, 2 specifically. Right. But, yeah. uh, but the the other improvement, especially on the Linux front, is they put some work on the app image. So then the app image will self update. And that. Uh, hey, super- right on. It's Astro yeah. Gene. That's a platinum title. I want to fuck with that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Here's. Mm, yeah. I kind of want to play those. There's my. This might be my justification for being able to buy a Switch simply to dump the ROM. Yeah, d- dump the BIOS and run it on here. Yeah, pretty pretty much, man. Be like, up, oh, take it out of the box. Boop, only used once on eBay. <laughs> Return. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the, the buffer cache rewrite actually uh, improved performance significantly. They have a little graph at the top of the article showing the 3400G with just using the uh, embedded RX Vega 11. That's significant. That went from like unplayable to console tier 30 FPS on many titles. Very Mm. good. (laughs) It's very good. (laughs) Interesting times. And especially the Switch has been because it's based on Tegra and like, oh, we got this, man. Yeah, yeah. we we, we can can emulate ARM. We can emulate CUDA. Yeah. So, oh, nope. uh, not not an emulation, but like some retro game playing, man. Um, Castlevania Simon's Destiny. We talked about it uh, a couple of weeks ago, right? You pl- you played Last it week. too, didn't you? Yeah, uh, I, I streamed a bit of it. And it for all accounts, man, it's a fun game. Hundred percent, I enjoyed playing it, and it's completely free. You just get GZ Doom. You install it, and a couple of people were like, "Hey, how do I get this installed?" Like, it's not, and it might be in the AUR right now. But uh, I did a little quick and dirty how-to and just set this thing up. On Ubuntu or Debian, piece of cake, self-contained, and you just pop it in with apt and uh, download the zip file for Simon's Quest. Long as it's in the directory, that's it. You're done. Yeah. Play with it. And OpenGL yep. works. Uh, Vulcan works. I, I love that testament to man's arrogance right there playing. She <laughs> said, Doom. Do, Doom on, yeah. yeah, I was just like, ha. Yeah. Because I can. I rem- yeah. I got that. I got those feels when uh, John Romero released that uh, last chapter for Doom, mm-hmm. and I, I used GZ Doom, and I cranked everything up. It's like, oh yeah, I don't remember Doom looking this good, but <laughs> you, yeah, you you Vulcan, also weren't playing everything. Doom on something that wasn't the equivalent of like a calculator screen. Six forty by four eighty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, so the the install instructions for Fedora um, are a little more complicated, just because Fedora doesn't ship a dependency for GZ Doom, mm. uh, but. But there is a copper uh, by Nalika, which works very well. I tested it with um, Simon's Destiny as well, and it works perfectly fine. So if you're in Fedora land, that's the way to do it. The link to that is in the show notes. Nice. Handy dandy. Um, so I think that's going to do it for us. Simon Com- is done. Indeed. Coming up next, we got to jump around and jump around, jump up, jump up. And oh, I lost all my points. Welcome back 
to the chair acquisition where we throw chairs at games, give you our opinion on them. You know, that thing we do. Uh, this week, we're taking a look at Jampala, developed by Yokareba Games, done on some sort of Chromium embedded framework, Node.js based, something or other. Uh, you can pick it up for about 10 bucks US. What is it? Jampala is a fast paced action platform or fast paced action puzzler, not platformer, with heavy fighting game vibes. While the core mechanics are simple, each game is a test of skill and strategy as you try to outscore and outplay your opponents. Features both local and online play. Uh, Yokareba sent us some keys, so thanks a lot for that. So let's get into it. Once again, Pedro actually likes video I, games. I, so do, he I do want to throw it out that they sent us the <laughs> message. They're like, here's your educational game, fuckos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, no, um, seriously, major kudos to Yokareba for sending us some keys. Uh, it launched out of the box over here on the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 7 3700X on KD Neon. Um, it holds 144 at 2560 by 1440, which is very nice. Um, and I guess uh with it being you know a browser game and all that um <laughs> you don't get an overlay so you might be wondering how did i see what the furps were mango hud uh the uh also being a browser game certainly explains why i couldn't get the uh dual shock or the dual sense uh to work uh unless i plug them in yeah that that certainly explains that and the graphics well Look at it. It's uh, awfully hipster pixel. But hey, as for the fun, well, you could probably see that the AI is a damn filthy cheater and they just ride along the bottom as much as they can. And they know the timing better than you do. So you're fucked. 99% of the time. Uh, outside of that, it's not a bad game. Uh, you will have to learn a character's skill set to be able to use it effectively. It's to be expected from, you know, a video game. And you will have to invest the time. And lately, I haven't had a lot of that to spare. So uh, that's on me. Uh, the it, it does very much live up to the whole competitive puzzle platforming moniker. Uh, and if the controller worked properly, I would be convinced uh, I could absolutely be persuaded to give it three chairs. But as it currently stands, two is what it gets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, on uh, Fedora 32, 64 bit with the i7 and the 5700 XT, launches out of the box. Same with the R9 and the GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, but, 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 but the menus will not play nicely with your controller. Um, you will not be able to select certain things if you are using a controller, except maybe sometimes you're going to have to use the keyboard for that. Um, also, watch out because if you're playing a multiplayer game, uh, if you want to enter a room code, uh, by entering the room code, you have committed to using the keyboard because it does the, um, what was it? The ultimate chicken horse method of like assigning controllers. Um, your graphical options are tiny, medium, big, and biggest. And yeah, fun wise. Yeah. Pedro's right. Yeah. It's a filthy fucking cheater. So, so dirty. And I mean, it might, it might be a necessarily wall to get people good at this sort of game to like get them to a point where they can play against other humans and like understand how the strategies work. But it's also a wall people might bounce off of. So, you know, it's a mixed bag. Um, I don't know. It could be fun with human op opponents. I played with Ven a little bit and it was it was okay. But also I wanted to use my controller, which was verboten, not allowed, no SERP. Um But like I'm I'm curious to see, because it supports up to four man uh, co-op or co four man versus. I'm curious to see what a full on game would look like. I think it would be a little crazier because um, like between experience components, you could have a fun game of chicken. But with inexperienced players, it just becomes just like just a lot of flailing as you attempt to like not die horribly. Um, the default mode is the first player to get to 200 points wins. So there's margin for error. Uh, I can really see games going on for quite a while if you have like people who know what they're doing because you're only walking away with a couple extra points after every round. But most of the time, it's best two out of three. Yeah, there's definitely a very nuanced game underneath here. Like Pedro was saying, all the characters have abilities that are of varying use in varying specific situations. And a lot of it is like how you can read your opponent and how to like get them to make undesirable moves. So there's there's definitely something there, but it's, it's not really for me. I'm going to give it one share. Well, uh, my first thought, you, both you were saying that, and I was like, this is the byproduct of when you set out to make a tournament-style game, when, like, 
crazy levels of accuracy and moves and stuff like that. Really when it should have been more of a party game, but I digress. Let's go about how did it run on the uh, 1920X Threadripper, as you might imagine with a 2060, it's just fine. No issues getting it in windowed mode full screen, holding 60 for ups at 1080, no problem. Picked up the Xbox One S, X, X, S, whatever controller, kinda. You know, you get like double presses in the main menu and AB, they're kind of flipped in the settings menu. So naturally you go play around with the keyboard. Then it randomly disconnects for fucking all reason. And that happens. Um, that's, I'm not alone on that one. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of like playing the, what the hell is the controller doing now minigame, but Hey, it is there. Another issue is the online multiplayer because again, it works kind of, and I say kind of because they opted for room codes, uh, and then to keep things interesting, they use like lead speak. That's a billion characters. It's a pain in the ass. Now, one thing I did notice, there's a copy and paste button because there has to be in full screen mode, all your X inputs locked. So you can get over to another monitor and try to type. Not going to happen. I'd like to see something, you know, like Steam Play integration, make it a little easier to set up. And by the way, if you're wondering, Proton fixes all the issues. Unfortunately, it pains me to say that, but this is the true true. Tried it with Proton Experimental. Now let's talk about the fun. Because what do you have here, man? You got special moves, super special moves, and the ability to wager, which I thought was a neat mechanic. Now, these are all interesting in their own respect until you realize this game boils down to who can hover on the bottom block longer. That's it. That's that's the lead strat to winning, man. And, you know, making those last minute jumps, getting those sweet, sweet points, that's brilliant. It's kind of entertaining, but it gets repetitive with a quickness, you know, going up the, I can see AI mixed bag, hundred percent on medium, the medium setting, which I believe is the default setting with the AI, uh, the, the AI will kind of like latch onto you and basically like the herp man and cause character blindness, wherever you go, it goes. But if you can get some space between you and the AI, you can just cheese the hell out of it. Cause it kind of mirrors you and you just run it to a corner and watch it die a lot. I don't have a problem with that. Now, if you throw in three AI opponents, you're just going to get wrecked. I agree with both of you. Fuck that noise. You just get wrecked. Again, trying to go for like a tournament level type play. Well, this is more of a party game. I'm sorry. You know, it might be a fun online party game if they unfuck the rune code nonsense. You know, you got Steamworks there. Work around it. Outside of that, let's jump around, cheese the AI until you get bored. Um, I have a great time with it. And I don't like something. I wanted to have a great time with it. We were saying that before we started, but... You know, especially with all of the nonsense of just getting the main input and the controller working correctly and having to resort to Proton and watching it all start working correctly. Yeah, you know where that's going. That's going to one. I can agree with you, Jordan. Yeah, well, I don't know if we got anything else we got to say about this game. Uh, it's nine nine nine, and and... Uh, yeah, the price is at least worth... Price? If yeah. you're looking at the video and you're going, eh, I think I'd like that. Eh, okay, yeah, 10 bucks. Yeah, but Maybe, maybe if you're say. like a super huge fan of like super puzzle fighters or games like this. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, again, I I think if you go back and rework a couple of things, you got a fun game here. It's just, I don't think it, I do feel that it's been focused more towards like, Hey, let's have like a tournament level game. I'm like, no, this is like yeah. a Jackbox party game. Yeah. Like it or not. I, I know no one wants uh, to hear that. And they're like, no, I, it's I, not I, what I envisioned. I'm like, well, you're still going to envision 12 reviews. I, th I think you can yeah. still do both. <laughs> you, you, you can have like the hardcore mode and then you could just have like the fun shits and giggles mode. I yeah, don't know. That, that's going to be. Hey, there, there's room to grow. So there's a pause. Indeed. Jump, yes. jump a two, electric boogaloo. <laughs> Coming up next, Pedro has some spicy opinions about Fallout and he's going to subject us to him whether we like it or not. Yay. And would you look at that? It's the end of the show. Yes. Chances are over the Past Rainbow hour or so we Some probably way. said something to annoy you or that you fundamentally disagree with. We cannon. probably Rainbow even unwillingly Rainbow. insulted your dog. So there's a way you can get in touch with us to tell us exactly how you feel. You can go fuck yourself. I mean, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and uh, oh. fill out the form. There's a uh, LGC Weekly is where you need to go to send your hate mail. Otherwise, well, uh, you can keep your comments Look. in your pocket. <laughs> Shut up, Tommy Wizzo. We should have LinuxGameCast.com slash go fuck yourself as our contact form. I'm just saying. <laughs> or at least, at least an alias, right? Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, right? mess with the DNS records right? a bit more. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not DNS. It's <laughs> WordPress site mapping. I'm not saying yeah, set up a yeah, subdomain. Yeah. It would be <laughs> easier to do the subdomain. It, prob- it yeah. probably would. Yeah, really oh, wait, 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 wait. We got some feedback from pa- from Pedro's uh, follow-up. Oh, a couple things. Hey, if you want to come party oh. with us, uh, we have open invites because I'm going to be hella testing stuff this upcoming weeks with the Fiber Pew Pew Network stuff. Mm. Um, we'd like you to come on the show and talk about this shit, man, free plugs. But yeah. we will require you to be like, hey, man, how did you test your stuff on Linux? You can't be like the Superland guy and be like, um, um it Pass the compile check, so I assume it's. Yeah, I, I, I exported it. <laughs> so there's a heads up. Send us a note. There's a little, you know, blurb in there. We're like, hey, just tell us about your thing. Tell us about your project. Open source, closed source. We don't care. We hose. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, David David C has some feedback for Pedro. He's been doing a follow up playthrough, or you you finished it a while ago, I think. Yeah. The last video, the last <laughs> vod just got posted. Three man, that was like yeah. what? How many episodes was that? How many weeks? It was like fourteen or fifteen episodes. It was, it was fourteen, and somehow we've lost like the next, the last episode. Thankfully, the last episode survived. <laughs> yeah. though. yeah, it's it's on okay. it's on our YouTube All page. Right. Go watch it. And he said, so this is from David C. They say thanks for sharing your thoughts and anal cysts, Pedro. You make some excellent <laughs> points, and I agree that. Fallout 3 deserves far more appreciation, parentheses, though I still think you're being a little bit overly harsh towards New Vegas. Dot, 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 lol, dot, um, (laughs) close parentheses. Uh, Each of the major Fallout, period. Uh, (laughs) Each of the, uh, each of the major Fallout games offers great experiences of one kind or another, and I love them all, exclamation point. Defend yourself, Pedro Mateus. Um, why? He's agreeing with me. (laughs) Defend yourself, no. Mateus. <laughs> My point was that Fallout 3, uh, a lot of, well, the internet as a whole seems to agree that Fallout New Vegas was the best one. And I don't necessarily agree with that. Because like I said in that video, Fallout New Vegas, if you're playing a video game for the plot, for, you know, the story that the developers wrote into the game... Yes, Fallout New Vegas is the best one. But if you're playing a story for something, if you're playing a game for the emergent narrative, for the environmental storytelling, for, you know, the interactivity and the game mechanics that you're provided with, Fallout 3 is the best one. It's still a Fallout Bethesda game. It's buggy as hell. But then again, so is New Vegas. And you could make the argument that, yes, New Vegas was like that. Did you watch... Did you watch H Bomber's guy's video on that? New Vegas versus Fallout 3? What, 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 yeah. What's your take on that? What's your take uh, on this place? I even left a comment on his video saying that... Oh, uh, shit. Then why are you bothering oh. asking? Go sort through all those comments. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Uh, to say that some of the arguments that he used against uh, Fallout 3 were as reductive as some of the arguments that he likes to criticize other people uh, in his videos defending other games. Uh, it's... Uh, the fact of the matter is... Fallout New Vegas had a lot of problems. Uh, Bethesda only gave Obsidian two years or 18 months to um, work on it. So, yes, a lot of New Vegas' shortcomings stem from that. I get that, but how the games currently exist, in my opinion... Fallout 3 is the better one. It has a lot more atmosphere. Fallout New Vegas is just bland because there's absolutely no engagement with you there's no reason to stray from the beaten path because it takes you everywhere on the map while in fallout 3 you actually have to go and explore if you want to see all of it and i like that <laughs> so that's a, that's that's a fascinating book report on mind conf pedro thank you for sharing that with us um uh-huh. well, uh, oh hey uh, so if you get somebody like me and i, I the only Fallout I've really ever seen was you playing through Fallout 3. And I wasn't joking around when I said, I look at Fallout 3 and I'm like, well, that's a fucky looking Skyrim mod. What Fallout would you suggest like to get into the series with? Would it be Fallout 3? Fallout 4. Okay. Which I I actually picked that up for PS4 because that was on sale for five bucks at a drugstore. So I might actually check Ooh, that out. Yeah, Fallout 4 as a yeah. starter into the series is possibly the best one, both at a technical level and as far as Bethesda environmental storytelling goes, it's the best one. What, what, it's a one, bit one simple th- mechanical wise, but 
yeah it's a I, good I, th- I, th- I think i think the one thing ven might bounce off of on that one though is like the settlement building and management stuff but that's optional i think you don't have to do yeah that. that's completely optional you can just not side with the minutemen and i was about that. to say that's exactly what i know that a skyrim job was like oh building houses fuck out i'm out <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah i i, I don't know I, I i i started playing fallout new vegas and then i murdered a chicken and then everyone started shooting at me and i decided maybe later well Pedro, uh, i do want to hit you with this since this is after all linux gamecast what's the best way to play fallout 3 under linux proton which one the proton any, just any, any of them <laughs> basically anything that isn't the three point something wine based version of proton there we go. anything four and up should be okay because uh valve actually added a little catch uh to the uh x live dll that used to load the games for windows live uh so yeah that gets disabled and you can just play the game now so yeah, you you want to use play on Linux for that, right? Play on Linux OS. <laughs> That's how I played it, and boy, was that Listen, crashy. <laughs> it's just disabled rim jobs on that bombshell. Let's get the fuck out of here. If you want to get in touch with me, just add Vin Stone on Twitter or just Vin at mass.linuxgamecast.com. You sniveling motherfucker. I'm gonna come through that monitor. Um yeah. Go ahead. I'm I'm Jordan Spung. I have no mouth, <laughs> but I'm still screaming anyways. You can find me on Twitter at the Burning Fool. Streaming on Twitch sometimes at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Uh, Jordan misspelled sniffling there. Uh, he has no mouth and he must sniffle. Uh, I, on the other hand, am Peter Mateusz. My nose, too, is getting how, a bit clogged up. How do you sniffle through your mouth? Been- because he's I've been doing he's, my best. He's like, <laughs> sniffle ball not, back. Sniffle. Yes. <laughs> so at unaccounted for on Twitter. F O U R. By the way. Credits. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically a sea shanty. If it was mostly profanities, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of that. <laughs> Indeed. Well, pro shanties. It, we're we're one episode away from episode four four four. We got to thank the party patreons who are making this what possible. What happens at four four four? I don't know. We Ooh. just start saying four over and over again. Uh, Aldius, Barb Rim, <laughs> Scott M, Mr. Fox Dog, Arthur, and the Cast, Mike G, Mike T. Han, our lone little Nicky fan, Dark Wing, NRC Monsters, Jack, Renault, Ryder X Machina, Paul, Veritanuda, Justin, and Frosty Claw. Then we got some sweet death notes like Nova K, Basil Beach, Ed Romero, Marcin, System T, Steven Jill, Dak, Kim, Smashley G, Renee, Benjamin, Leonardo. Ooh, and all our lovely, lovely channelings, which Don't are way too many. I can't possibly read them all. You but lazy people fun. like Jason B, Paulo P, North Ranger, Sherry Vig von Havenstaven, Reginald O, uh, Simcha B, Simcha, Simcha. Uh, Jonas Rulo, Martin W, hey, Whippy, um, Dodger, Lutris, oh, Evandro, Ruby B, Egal D, Dementor, Zeno, and Daniel. Exist. <laughs> it never existed. Never. Until now. It's not real. <laughs> it's. Oh, yes, and Pennywise. <laughs> it's Pennywise. Yeah. Boo. That if I remember. Simcha, yeah. We'll, we'll sim, yeah, a lot. Bye. Simcha, go fuck yourself. I don't know. <laughs> Five dudes.